Well, Ben, it looks mighty good on paper, but I think I'd like to see it close up again. All right. Father, you've seen that lumber a dozen times. Do you think Mr. Cartwright chopped it down since the last time you saw it? Now, Susan, you know better than that. Susan, your boy has a perfect right to see that timberland again if he wants to before he buys it. He sure has. Mr. Blanchard, we have a wagon down at the Liberty Stable. I can drive you out whenever you want to go. Oh, that's a good idea. What about it, Susan? Would you like to come along? I'd love it. Good. Boy, oh, you, you got a bunch to do. Won't you let me drive? Oh, oh you can't drive with that bad arm. Honey, with one arm, I can drive better than 90% of the people in this town. Yeah, that isn't the way you were talking when we drove into town. <laughs> I guess you make oh, up. Oh, look. Look. Look at that horse. A real miracle maker. Why don't you ask him to heal that shoulder of yours? Oh. I don't believe in them fellas, Susan. Run out of that snake oil and they're finished. Besides, my old shoulder's about well anyhow. <laughs> You're very fortunate to be able to laugh at your troubles. That your injury can mend. There are others not so fortunate. Are you, uh, Mr. God? I am what the young lady laughingly referred to as the miracle maker. If your shoulder doesn't mend, perhaps I can help you. Oh, my goodness. Do you think I hurt his feelings? No, don't pay me any attention, Susan. Well, if we're going to look at that timber, we'd better be on our way. Yeah. Back about an hour. Oh, don't, don't hurry now. I'll take care of the supplies down to the store. And take it easy with these people. I don't want you dumping up prospective customers in a ditch somewhere. No. Why don't you let me drive horses? It's such a lovely day, and I want to give us a real exciting ride. I don't know, Susie. These old horses have been spooked all day. Oh, come on, horse, please. Better not argue with a horse. When she's in this kind of mood, she can't win. I don't want my head caved in, too. Here. What is it, Jeb? What's the matter? It's not an accident. I'm getting just a little tired of hearing you say that over and over and over again. Now, let me tell you something. It was an accident. It could have happened no matter who was driving. Now, you've just got to stop eating your heart out. I appreciate your concern. I know how you feel. But you can't take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders. If, if, if we were to start feeling responsible for everything that happened in life, why, how could we live? Yeah, I reckon you're right, Paul. But Susan don't understand that. I'm gonna ride out there. Dr. Moore's got that specialist out there today, and I wanna see what he's got to say. Fine. Fine. I'll ride out with you. But remember, it was an accident.
What'd you find out, Doc? I examined Miss Blanchard very carefully. The bruises and lacerations are healing quite well. What about her legs, Doctor? Will my niece walk again? I can only confirm what Dr. Moore has already said. I can find nothing wrong with her legs. But, but Doc, if there ain't nothing wrong with her legs, how come she can't walk? Dr. Moore, isn't there somebody else we could call in? Someone from New York, maybe? Celia, Dr. Gross is the finest man in the country in this field. Thank you. Is there another stage today? I should get back to San Francisco as quickly as possible. Yes, there's a stage late this afternoon. Let me make you all some tea before you leave. You're very kind. Is it all right if I go in here and see her? Go ahead. Hi, Susie. Doctor said I could come in and see you a minute. It's kind of dark in here, don't you? Do you want me to lift one of these shades? Leave them alone, Hoss. I like it this way. All right. This way you like it. Doctor says you, you're doing real good. You're going to be up in no time. I know what the doctor said, Hoss. Well, his ain't the last word, Susie. The, there's lots of other doctors. I'm tired of doctors, Hoss. Tired of all that probing and poking. And all for nothing. Susie, you, you can't talk like that. You can't just give up. You know it, Hoss, and I know it. I'm never going to walk again. Oh, if, if that ain't the dead burnest bunch of foolishness I ever heard in my life, well, we get a doctor can find out what's ailing you, you're going to be as good as new and up in no time. My father's dead, Hoss. My father's dead. All because of my foolishness. Susie, you, you, you can't keep on blaming yourself for that. And no more than I can. My Paul says that if people go through life blaming themselves for everything that happens, well, life just ain't, ain't worth living. It isn't. Now you listen to me. Hoss, I don't want to listen to anyone anymore. Just leave me be. Please. We're gonna find a way, Susie. I promise you we're gonna find a way. doing all they can, Hoss. You two fellows are doctors. You ought to know what to do. But we're only doctors, not miracle makers, only human beings. We honestly don't know what's wrong with Susan. Maybe we never will. Maybe whatever it is will gradually disappear. We just don't know. You just don't know. And you're doctors. What good are you? Hoss. It's all right, Ben. Your nerves are all riled up since the accident, Hoss. And I think you feel guilty. Sometimes guilt makes people feel edgy. That's exactly what's wrong with Susan right now. She blames herself for her pa's death. As Dr. Moore said, guilt affects the mind strangely. Doctor. Do you think perhaps Susan doesn't want to walk? Perhaps. But the mind is a strange world in itself. Maybe someday it will be as important to treat the mind as we try to treat the body today. I don't know about this kind of talk. All I know is we got to figure out some way to help Susan. We can be patient, hope, and pray. That'll be a great comfort to her. I know. 
I wish there was something else we could give her. Now I really must be going. Boss, would you uh, drive Dr. Gross and Dr. Moore into town? I've got to get back to the ranch if Miss Celia can give me a horse. Oh, help yourself, Ben. Bye, Miss Celia. Miss Celia? First meeting. From this small group, the believers will grow. And I'm sure that by the time I leave, the subtle meeting place will not be able to contain them all. Then, friends, take heed and listen to my message. For my power will grow. The knowledge of my power will grow and magnify. And then the faithful shall be healed. Why not now? You talk about helping people. Help me. Who are you, my unfortunate friend? Poor man who can't make a living for himself anymore. And what has happened to you? Oh, about five years ago, a bronc throwed me. I've been like this ever since. Drifting, living through the grace of handouts. Unable to get my leg up over a horse at a pile of hay in the stable. You with your fancy words of faith and cures. You tell me there's hope for someone like me? What hope is there for you? I have seen the troubles that have been handed down to the son of man to be exercised in their life. I have seen the woes, the tribulations, the despairs which have been heaped on the head of all mankind. They have all cried to me for help, for a miracle. What is it that you want from me, a candy-coated cloud, a tomorrow's paradise? I want to be able to walk upright again. I want to work again. How much do you want it? For your cure stands here before you. If you believe in me, you can be cured. Some who have sown in tears have reaped in joy. And the lame have walked, the blind have seen, and the deaf have heard. And me. Help me. Do you believe in me? Do you have faith in me? Yes. I believe. Oh, then, my friend, as I lay my hands on you now, believe in me, trust in me. Open your soul, open your heart to me. Believe in me, and your body will straighten. Have faith in me, and you will walk upright again. Straighten your body. Five years since my fall. Five years of drifting around and begging for handouts, and now I can walk. You hear that, friend? Five long years, now I can walk! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Garth, could I talk to you, sir? What about Fenn? That crippled fellow, you just, you just help. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about him if I could. Come with me to my hotel. Susie, it's me, Hoss. I know. I heard you talking to Aunt Celia. Susie, there's, there's something I gotta talk to you about. Another doctor. No, 
No, no, it, it ain't a doctor, but it's a fellow that's liable to be able to help you. I just want to be left alone. Susie, you got to listen to me. This fellow's liable to really be able to help you. Horse, go away. Please go away. Susie, just listen to me for a minute. It's about this fellow named Garth. Garth? You mean that man in town, the faith healer? Susie, he's, he's sure enough, he's helped people. I saw him cure an old cowboy that was all stove up and bent and crooked from a fall. He, he made him stand up straight and walk again. Susie, it can't do no harm to talk to him. I told you, I don't want to talk to anyone. Feeling guilty about your paw again, ain't you? Susie, I... I feel guilty about you. I reckon it's just something we'll have to live with the rest of our lives. Horse? Horse, I don't want you to suffer. It was all my fault. Will it make you feel better if I see this man? Susie. Anything that'll help you make me feel better. I, I just want you to talk to him, that's all. All right. I'll talk to him, Ross. I don't know about this, Hoss. I, I just don't know. But, Miss Celia, I done told you I talked to Susan and she wants to see him. I was under the impression that you'd explain this to the young lady's family, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry, madam. I hadn't intended forcing my way in. Just a minute. Miss Celia, you do want to help Susan, don't you? You don't want to see her lay in there in that room the rest of her life. Hoss, you know I don't, but this kind of thing... Well, ma'am, what harm can it do? We've already tried everything else. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garth. I didn't mean to be rude. Susan wants to see you. Naturally, you can see her. Thank you. Where is she? There in that room. Go on, I'll show you. All right. If you don't mind. Don't open the blinds. I want it dark. Do not be afraid of the light. I am Garth. I am here to help you. Oh, that's wonderful, Horst. <laughs> I'll tell you, they had a bunch of them. It was one of the funniest minstrel shows I've ever seen. Oh, I wish I could have been there. <laughs> oh, Horst, I hadn't even asked you about your arm. How is it? Oh, it's fine, Susan. I'll be out of this rig in a couple of days, I reckon. You're the one that counts. How are you feeling? How are you getting along? Garth says that I'm making marvelous progress. Well, it's been a couple of weeks. Oh, Garth tells me it won't be much longer. He thinks I'm doing beautifully. Well, Susie, it's, it's you that I'm interested in. How, how do you feel? Well, I feel wonderful. And every day I seem to get more confidence. Oh, before the summer is over, Hoss, I'm going to walk again. Good. You moving your feet or legs or anything? No. But Garth says that it happens all at once when I have complete faith in him. Yeah. It appears to me like you've got plenty of faith in him already. Oh, I do. But I guess I just don't have enough, do I? Well, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Garth? Uh, Susan. Oh, I'm sorry, Hoss, but I've got to go to work now. Oh, I'll run along. I'll see you later. Well, before you go, Mr. Cartwright, Susan is entering a very critical phase of her treatment. It might help her if you didn't see her for a while. Mr. Garth, Susie and me have been friends for a long, long time. What possible harm could it be me coming to see her? Well, Susan and I are entering a period of intense concentration. 
Any influence outside, no matter how friendly, would tend to destroy that concentration. It might slow down her recovery, tend to make it impossible altogether. I'm sure you understand. Susie, is, is that the way you want it? You want me to come back? Well, it's... If Mr. Garth wants it, if he thinks it's best... I'm afraid I do, Susan. I think it's vital. Well, that's the way it'll be, then. I'll see you later, Susan. Well, it won't be for long. I'll send for you. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. Goodbye, Hoss. You must have faith in me, Susan. Faith so complete and absolute that it fills every portion of your being and leaves no room for the slightest shred of doubt. Do you have faith in me, Susan? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you have such unquestioning faith that you will do exactly as I say, simply because I say it? Yes, Garth. Well, what's the matter, Garth? There seems to be a limit to your faith. Oh, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. I have the most complete faith in you. You think you do, but you've never had complete faith before, so how can you possibly know what it's like? Well, I'm trying as hard as I can. There's something in there, something like a barrier that's holding you back, something like a dam, something we must remove if you're to be cured. Well, I'm not aware of it. But it's there. Removing it will take an even greater effort on your part. You've, you've given so much of your time to me. There are so many others you could be helping. Maybe I shouldn't keep you to myself anymore. You're an unusual woman, Susan. Lovely of face and form. And most important, so unselfish. Thank you. You know, I've never seen you smile before. In the world, I see there's little enough to smile at. Wretchedness, poverty of spirit. Garth, if you feel you ought to move on, I'd understand. No, we've made too much progress to stop now. There's one last effort you can make if you're willing to try it. I'll try anything if it will only make me walk again. I think what is needed to... To break the barrier that preventing your cure is an act of blind, unquestioning faith. An act by which... An act by which you place yourself completely in my hand. When you have put yourself in a position where you must trust me, where you must have faith in me, then and only then can you be cured. What do you want me to do? I thought. I'll tell you when I've decided. Well, I got your message. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, make it fast. Will you have to get back in the house? I've been working here for two weeks and you haven't told me a thing. I want to know what's going on. Look, I told you repeatedly, my ways are my own. And I told you I ain't leaving without part of that money. What money? Oh, now, don't treat me like one of your stupid followers. I know how rich that girl is and I know you're planning on getting some of it and I want my share. You made a mistake, Thorne. This girl is sensitive. She's an intelligent, unusual girl. I'm going to do everything I can to help her. Poppycock. You've been preaching for so long, you're starting to believe your own words. Well, if you don't agree with my words, maybe it's time you left. Oh, no. You're not getting rid of me. I'm staying for this one. And it better not be too long. Who is it? Garth, may I come in? Yes, of course.
I spoke to you about an act of faith this morning, Susan. Yes? Well, I've been thinking about it ever since. Oh, so have I. And I've been worrying about it. Well, you shouldn't worry about it, Susan. I'd hoped you were looking forward to it for a chance to express yourself in one of the most beautiful of all basic human emotions. I never thought of it that way. It sounded more like a test. What do you want me to do? Susan, I... I want you to marry me. Am I presuming too far? I... I don't know. It's just that I never thought anyone would want to marry me the way I am. Perhaps this will help you have faith in me. Faith that I'll be able to kill you. But it's all so mechanical. I always thought that I would marry because of love. But faith and love are but two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist without the other. But underneath all those words, Garth, aren't you asking me to marry you so that I can walk again? No. Garth, that, that wouldn't be right. Susan, I'm asking you to marry me because I love you. Susan, please, marry me. Don't you see I need you as much as you need me? God, you, you need me. A little bit tighter, will you? I said a little bit tighter. I notice you're not going over to Susan Blanchard's every day now. Have you heard how things are going? Well, I decided I'd stay away for a while. As long as that Garth helps Susan, that's all I care about. Well, she sure got a lot of faith in him. Uh, reckon she should. He's done her a lot of good, Joe. Done a lot of folks some good. Have you seen that Thorn ride lately? Ain't nobody rides any better than he does. Yeah, I've seen him. Rides awful good for a man who hasn't been on horseback for five years. Maybe a little bit too good. What are you driving at? Everybody's always taking a dig at Garth. Yeah, maybe you're right. Just a feeling I have. Oh, Hoss. One of the Blanchard ranchmen just rode by, had a message for you. What sort of message? Susan wants to see you. Hey, you don't reckon she's, you don't reckon she's walking? No, I, I don't know. It didn't say anything about that. Yeah. Sure, it just might be. I better get over there. I'm sorry I ever taught you how to braid these things. You've been braiding them since you were five years old. Oh, Horse, it's so good to see you. Susan. Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Just a few days ago that you asked me not to come back. What's happened? We have news for you. The surprise? Might be. Susan has consented to be my wife. Is what? Yes, we're getting married, Horse. And I would like you to give me away. But, Susie, you hardly know this man. He's almost a complete stranger. He's no stranger to me, Horse. We love each other. What's all the big, big hurry about? Won't you wait until you're for sure, Susie? I'm sure now. The sooner the better, for Susan's sake. Planning it for Saturday. Horse, will you be there? I'll let you know, Susie. I'll let you know. Congratulations. Pretty smart. Great big ranch. All that cattle. Look, what do you want, Thorne? I 
want my share. There aren't going to be any shares. I'm marrying Susan because I love her. Sure. And what's going to happen when the little lady finds out you can't make her walk? Listen, she's going to see through you before the ink's dried on that license. Maybe. Maybe she can be cured. I, I have a feeling sometimes at the right time with the right person, maybe I could cure her. Listen, you couldn't even cure a hangnail. But I'll tell you what you're going to do, Garth. You're going to go in and get some money from that little lady, and you're going to give me my share. No, I'm not. The agreement we had before is all over. Is it? Yes. And suppose I tell the little lady the truth. What happens to you then? If I come back here again, I'll kill you. Son, I... I think you ought to do as Susan asks. Give her away at the wedding. How can she love him? She doesn't even know him. Oh, sometimes... Two people just look at each other once, and they're in love. What's really bothering you? Paul, I, I took Garth out there so he could make Susan walk again. Mm -hmm. I never figured on anything like this. Thorne, what are you doing here? I want to see you. Come in. Paul, this is this is Mr. Thorne, the fellow I was telling you about that Mr. Garth Heel downtown. Oh, yeah. I'm pulling up stakes and I'm leaving tonight, but before I go, there's something I want to tell you. Go on. That Garth, the great healer, he's a fake. What do you mean? Every time we go to a new town and start a meeting, he cures me. That sets up the suckers real good for him. Now he's going to marry that girl for her money and that big ranch her father left her. Paul, oh, that explains it, don't you see? That explains everything, the marriage. You're going to go back out there and confront him with me. Oh, no. I ain't going to get myself killed. Thorn! Thorn! Hoss! Hoss. Oh, you, you don't need him out there. But, Paul, I, I can't let her go through with this. Thorn being out there isn't going to help anything. Not if Susan really loves Garth. Oh, Paul, she can't love him. She's, she's in love with what, with what she thinks he is. Don't you see? He's got some kind of a hold on her or something. Paul, I can't let her go through with it. Yeah, maybe you're right. I... But you got to be real careful the way you break this to Susan. Yeah. I'll think of something. Celia, I'd like to talk to Susan. I just got her ready for bed. You can see her in the morning. Well, I think maybe she'd like to say goodnight to me. No, God, just a minute, please. I... If it's money you want, I can get it for you. I'm a fairly wealthy woman in my own right. Just why are you telling me this? Because I want you to leave here. Miss Celia, I'm in love with Susan. I'm going to marry her. I think the sooner you accept that, the sooner we'll all be happy here. You just want the ranch and her money. I don't believe you love her. You love her. Do you want to deprive her of happiness? Perhaps even the chance to walk again?
I've been waiting for you to say good night. I'm glad I, I wanted to talk to you, Susan. Why, is something wrong? No. How lovely you are. I love you so much. And I love you, Garth. Susan, why do we have to wait? Can't we be married tomorrow? I don't have any objections, Garth, but we haven't heard from Hoss yet. Is that so important? Do we have to wait for him? Well, it is rather important to me, Garth. We grew up together and we've always been such good friends. And a girl only gets married once and I... I would like to have him at my wedding. We can wait a few days, can't we? Susan, I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? People, they... They don't understand me. They don't understand my abilities. I'm afraid they're going to try and keep us apart. Nothing will ever keep us apart, Garth. Nothing. Susan, this is so important to the both of us. Why... Why take a chance? Why run the risk of perhaps losing... Well, if we don't hear from Hoss by tomorrow, you can go and make arrangements for the next day. Will that be all right? Yes, of course. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Good evening. I'd like to talk to you alone. Outside. What's in your mind, Mr. Cartwright? What kind of man are you, Garth? Really? What, uh, what do you mean? I just had a little visit with your compadre, Thorne. Oh. Well, look, let me explain to you about Thorne. Don't bother. Don't bother. He gave me all the facts. Well, he gave you the facts, but I want to tell you the reasons behind those facts. I'd like to hear them. All right. Look, in order for me to be able to heal anybody, they have to have faith in me. They have to believe in me. Now, Thorne's little demonstration is like, a, like an incentive. With that evidence, false as it may be, they begin to believe in me. They begin to have faith in me. Like Susan. Well, yeah, well, I like Susan. But Thorne tells me you're a complete, a, a total fake. Now, what happens when Susan discovers that? What happens when she finds out you can't help her? But I, I believe I can. Susan isn't just following after me, begging to be cured. Look, I... I fall in love with Susan. Now you listen to me. You listen to me real good, Garth. I brought you to Susan. I'm responsible for any influence you might have over good or bad. If you're planning on marrying that little gal for this ranch and her money, I swear to you, I'll kill you. Well, then the only way to convince you and everyone else of my sincerity is to cure her before I marry, isn't that it? I don't want you to even try to do something you can't do. Not even try? And then after we're married, have everyone think I married her for her money? I don't want her hurt, Garth. All right, all right, then you come with me, because I'm going to prove to you that I'm not what you suspect. Garth, what are you going to do? I'm going to cure her. Now. Miss Celia, I want you to get Susan. But she's asleep. Please. I think you best get her, ma'am. I heard your voices. I was so excited I couldn't sleep. My horse, what are you doing here at this hour of the night? Garth, is anything wrong? No, Susan, nothing's wrong. Oh. Mr. Cartwright doubts my sincerity. He doubts my ability to cure you. Is that true, horse? Susan, I brought Mr. Garth here in the first place. I just want to be sure that he can help you. Oh, he 
just going to help me, Hoss. But when, Susan, when? Garth will pick the time, Aunt Celia. I have picked the time, Susan. The time is now. Now? But, Garth, you said... You said that I had to have complete faith first. That first we must marry. I know, Susan. But you do have faith in me, don't you? You see, Mr. Cartwright and your aunt, they question my motives. Hoss? Aunt Celia? Susan, we must prove them wrong. We worked together day and night, both of us, so hard for this moment. Ever since we first met each other, we have built up your strength in me. Your strength that I could make you walk. I say, walk. I command you to walk. Susan, I command you to. Get up and walk. I can't. I, Garth, command you to. That's about enough. No, wait, wait, I know I can. Garth, no, wait, I know I can. Let's see if you help me with Susan. I believed I could cure her. I believed I could cure her. God! No, God! 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 Susan. Just a man. But I love him. Oz. No. Oz, I love him. No, no. You fell you fell in love with, with what you wanted him to be. I'm so sorry, Susan. It was all my fault. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Oh, 
Jesús. Wait for him, Hoss. Because he will be back. 